Throughout history, a few rare individuals have devoted themselves to skills and knowledge in a wide variety of subjects. Known as the Renaissance Man, people like Aristotle, Leonardo da Vinci, and Benjamin Franklin have contributed much to humanity through their knowledge. Here in Kansas, one man's lifetime of devotion to knowledge and service certainly achieves these landmarks, and in doing so, renders upon him the title of Olathe's Renaissance Man. His name was Marshall Enzor. Jacob and Ida Enzor, both originally from Maryland, settled as newlyweds in Johnson County, Kansas in 1898. Giving up comfortable lives on the East Coast, they were determined to make their life together on a farm. Both were industrious and hardworking, traits they would pass on to their children. In 1899, Marshall Hamilton Ensor was born, and five years later, in 1904, came his sister Loretta. These two siblings would develop a close bond, and for the next 65 years, they journeyed together from obscure farm life to national recognition. In 1909, the Unsors moved with their two children to a 120-acre farm south of Olathe. At the time, Olathe was a small agricultural county seat with a population of approximately 3,000. The family would labor the rest of their lives to develop their dairy farm. As a boy, Marshall would follow close behind his father, learning trade after trade. Inquisitive about everything, it was soon evident that he had a talent working with tools and could do just about anything. At the age of 10, Marshall's cousin gave him a scroll saw as a gift, and he began making intricate doll furniture for his sister out of cigar box wood. In 1911, tragedy struck the Ensor farm. Jacob, Marshall's father, contracted polio and became bedridden. Ida was left to oversee all aspects of the farm. Marshall and Loretta helped their mother with the farm and household duties while attending school. Eventually, Jacob learned to walk again, but this traumatic incident instilled responsibility and self-reliance in young Marshall and Loretta. As a student at Olathe High School, Marshall's talents continued to develop. He made a kitchen cabinet in his manual arts class and entered it into the Simon Saw Company's national competition, winning first place. That same year, the manual arts teacher at Olathe High hired Marshall as a paid teacher's assistant. He was 15 years old. Marshall graduated from Olathe High School in 1917. That fall, he drove Loretta to her first day of high school, and the course of action that took place on this day would forever alter his life. Olathe Superintendent Ian Hill pulled Marshall aside and asked him to become the manual arts teacher for Olathe High. At the age of 19, Marshall Enzor became the Olathe School District's manual arts teacher and for the next 46 years devoted himself to teaching thousands of Olathe students. Marshall's classes would include auto repair, photography, drafting, woodworking, alabaster, and welding. Marshall's vision separated him as a man ahead of his time. One skill Marshall took pride in above all others, and a skill he passed on to hundreds, if not thousands of students, was the emerging technology of radio. In the early 20th century, radio technology was new and very rare, but Marshall was fascinated. While he was still in high school, Marshall built a spark gap radio used to transmit and receive Morse code. In 1922, Marshall took the first class radio operator's exam in Kansas City and established radio station 9BSP. He constructed a new radio and built an 80-foot antenna tower at the farm. Marshall wanted to teach his students this new technology but the government regulations would not allow him to operate 9BSP from the school and his farm. Loretta would solve this problem. She followed her beloved brother and took the first class radio exam and was granted the station call sign of 9UA. She was the first female to hold a license in Kansas. 
9UA would also be the first school radio station in Kansas, and Loretta was its trustee. Marshall and Loretta continued to pioneer this new technology from their farm. Marshall added a radio room to the kitchen, a larger antenna tower, and a generator in the basement so Loretta could charge the radio batteries each day. In 1926, Loretta sat down at the radio and searched the airwaves for someone to talk to. That evening, she stumbled across an operator in Australia and by chance became the first female voice to span the Pacific Ocean. Marshall met and fell in love with Ina Dana, a school teacher and librarian, and in 1930, they were married. She moved to the farm with the rest of the Ensor family, only to move out with Marshall several years later, when tensions flared between her and Loretta. Marshall and Ina bought a home in Olathe, near the high school. In 1934, Jacob, beloved father to Marshall and Loretta, died. His death left much responsibility on the farm. Marshall began to divide his time between his home in Olathe, the farm, and teaching. After World War I, it became evident that radio was an important tool for national progress. The American Radio Relay League sanctioned amateur operators across the nation to teach radio by using their own equipment to broadcast the lessons. Very few radio operators took to this task of volunteering their time. In 1929, Marshall began teaching radio by radio. Marshall, with Loretta filling in on occasion, would teach free of charge for the next 10 years every night during the winter months. One lesson a night, seven days a week for 50 lessons. Marshall and Loretta, over the course of a decade, taught an estimated 10,000 people the use of radio. They never missed a lesson. In New York, in 1937, William S. Paley, the head of Columbia Broadcasting System, otherwise known as CBS, chose to bestow an annual award to amateur radio operators. Known as the Paley Award, one individual each year would be selected based on the merits of their amateur radio service. In 1940, amongst thousands of operators, Marshall Enzor won the Paley Award for his dedication to teaching radio by radio. He and Loretta flew to New York to receive the award at a luncheon at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Loretta was invited to New York because she had substituted for Marshall and taught numerous lessons. At home, the Olathe Chamber of Commerce sponsored a dinner to celebrate Marshall's award, where he was honored by Olathe Mayor John Hartley. The delight from this accomplishment was unfortunately short-lived. Ida Ensor, the mother that taught Marshall and Loretta so much, died that same year. For the next 50 years, Loretta would live alone and with Marshall's help, oversee the farm. When World War II began, Marshall was too old to be drafted, so he began writing letters to anyone he knew that could help him join the military. He was commissioned as a lieutenant commander in the United States Navy. He and Ina spent almost three years in Seattle, where one of his duties was to research and develop radio directional finding for the Navy. The directional finders that Marshall helped develop would later aid aircraft in finding German Wolfpack submarines hunting Allied ships in the Atlantic. After the war, he returned to Olathe, his students and beloved farm. Fondly called Mr. Wizard by his students, he was the consummate encourager, telling them to do their best and then do more. He lived this motto out over the course of his teaching career as he did many extraordinary things. Marshall was instrumental and organized with his classroom procedures, and he once again found himself far ahead of his time. In the 1940s, he began offering a manual arts class to girls, practically unheard of at the time. He taught female students electrical repair, how to build a cedar chest, and many other vital skills. Marshall retired from teaching in 1965, 
After a lifetime of achievement, Marshall and Loretta decided to organize the farm into a museum to display their many accomplishments and to demonstrate the use of early radio. For a long career of teaching and devotion to the Olathe School District, Marshall was honored by having the Olathe High School, now Olathe North, athletic field named in his honor. It was a cherished moment to celebrate a life dedicated to learning and teaching. No one knew at the time that that life was about to end. On February 26, 1970, after 70 years of farm life, 46 years of teaching, three years of service in the Navy, and 54 years of amateur radio operation, Marshall H. Ensor died after a short illness. He was survived by his wife, Ina, and devoted sister, Loretta. Loretta, still on the family farm, was now truly alone to manage all affairs of the new Enzor Museum and to maintain the farm. Determined to see the vision completed, she hired help on the farm and sought legal counsel. With Loretta's resolve, the museum was established and set up as a nonprofit trust. Loretta Enzor passed away in 1991. She never married, and Marshall and Ina had no children, so the story of the Enzor family in Olathe came to a close. When funds began to run low in the trust, the care of the Ensor Farm and Museum was taken over by the city of Olathe. In 2003, it was selected as a Kansas historical site, and in 2004, because of the Paley Award Marshall won in 1940, the farm and museum was approved as a national historical site. In 1929, Marshall wrote an essay about a grandfather clock he had built. The closing paragraph of the essay speaks of his thoughts about the clock. But for us today, looking back on the life of Marshall Enzer, the words speak just as well of the man himself. I often wonder if my grandfather clock will, in some future time, be considered with the sentiment and veneration that we bestow on our forefathers' clocks. I am of the opinion it will be considered in the same way, for it has already produced that atmosphere of tranquility and dignity in our home, which can only be produced by an old grandfather clock.